Hello everybody. Today I'll start discussing on different oiling processes. Actually, you know the oiling process is important in the, one of the important manufacturing process. So oiling means basically the joining of the two different components and of course we'll try to explain the what are the different techniques or methodologies is adopted for the joining of the two components. So oiling means we understand that uh, there is a need to uh, fuse the material and to bond uh, bonding of the material may happen at the by simply melting of the both the material parent material or some kind of the solid state uh, uh, process oiling process is also there where we try to join the two components or we bond the two different components without melting also so if we look uh, this is in general that is called the oiling and joining processes in general but of course there are other uh, joining methods also but our focus is only on the on the oiling process and more on the fusion oiling process and the solid state oiling process that means uh, when there is a melting how the jo different joining occurs between the two components and when uh, there is a we can uh, without melting also the two components can also be joined so we'll try to explain all these principle phenomena uh, basic understanding of the heat transfer associated with the link process so that we can understand the process in the better way. Now, seeing is that is that possible to bring two metallic surfaces uh, together? It means that when you try to represent any metallic surfaces or try to join the two different components, so most of the cases we found that the surface of the a metallic component it is basically there is some contaminated layer and some oxide layers is always there in the metallic surface. So we need to apply some amount of the energy to remove at least or to displace this contaminated layer or oxide layers and after that when the two metallic components are in contact then it is possible to join together. So this is very ideal situation that means when you two metallic surface bring together but that metallic surface not having any kind of the oxides layer or any kind of the contaminated layer then the at the atomic level this bonding of the two metallic surface is possible so that means in that cases we no need to apply any kind of the external energy just to join or just to oil these two components so this is the actually is a very ideal situation but Practically, when we see the welding occurs, we need to apply some kind of the heat energy. So, without the application of the any energy, it is not possible to join uh, together two different components. It means that we apply the energy just to uh, melt uh, or just to displace this the oxide layers or contaminated layer and facilitates the two different components come in contact uh, and the make the atomic level bonding of these two components. So that is why we apply any kind of the energy heat energy associated with the uh, oiling process. So broadly this oiling process or categories are the two different segregation one is the fusion oiling another is the solid state oiling process. So fusion oiling process here uh, this fusion oils are created by the covalences of the molten metal based basically fusion is there so we need to melt both the component and then we can join together so here the there is a amount of the energy required such that you will be able to uh, melt the material that means above melting point and then once the melting occurs then we try to then allow to do the solidification and basically cooling of the uh, liquid metal to the ambient temperature then bonding between the two components occur. This is the basic phenomena associated with the fusion oiling process. Now in this case we see there is one point I have mentioned that it is associated with the fresh transition inherent to the process. It means that there is a fusion oiling it is necessary to change the phase from liquid phase to solid phase and of course it, it always creates some kind of the heat affected zone. Heat affected zone means the solid state phase transformation occurs but it is not subjected to any kind of the melting. So then that this is the area surrounded by the molten zone. This particular area is defined as the heat affected zone. Now of course during the cooling phase when you try to cool when you melt the substrate material and after that we are allowing the cooling of the substrate material during this cooling phase it is basically subjected to so many kind, uh, different types of the metallurgical changes and that changes induce some kind of the uh, internal stress associated with the any kind of the oiling process as well as the not only internal stress it will be subjected to some kind of the distortion of the of the component we will discuss later on about this residual stress and distortion associated with the fusion oiling process apart from this thing there is another 
category of the oiling process that is solid state oiling process in this case if there is no need to reach the up to the melting point but most of the cases we reach close to the melting point maybe i can say that 70 to 80 percent of the melting point temperature the is the maximum temperature associated with the any kind of the solid state uh, oiling process so here uh, maybe created by macroscopic or microscopic coalescences between the two components so we create the situation it means that here also if we in this case uh, we try to so uh, in solid state oiling process definitely we try to remove the contaminated or oxide layers on the metallic surfaces then then try to bring the two components together such that the bonding should occur at the macroscopic level or the microscopic uh, any kind of the morphology it it can be created so this is the principle of the solid state welding process. So, more clearly, we will start with the basics of the fusion welding process. So, we start with the arc welding process. So, uh, in this, the arc welding is one of the fusion welding process. So, here the electric arc is used and the generated to heat the substrate material and I, I uh, you observe in the I think any kind of the arc welding process which is used in any uh, the construction side also. But how it works? We can see that uh, in the arc welding process the melting and solidification when there is electrode is in contact it actually creates kind of the electrical circuit and you see there is a some AC or DC current is supply uh, through the welding cable one part is connected to the electrode and the other part is connected to the workpiece and such that it creates a complete electrical circuit and when there is a uh, in this particular point this arc is generated so arc is generated by maintaining a gap between the electrode and the workpiece and and with the application of the high amount of the current and some amount of the potential differences there is a flow of the electron occurs and that will try to create some kind of the arc so this arc is uh, heat the substrate material and then uh, responsible for the melting of the uh, substrate material or other way um, arc also try to melt the this thing the electrode material as well and then electrode material will deposited on the substrate material just to bond between the Two components so therefore the melting may happen both side it can happen to the electrode in case of the consumable electrode the co electrode can melt and other melting also happen to the workpiece and this co combining this together uh, once it is melting and then once uh, we just move the uh, welding torch or electrode uh, in that case that it is subjected to some kind of the solidification that means a liquid phase gradually converted to the uh, solid phase and from the solid phase to come back to the room temperature so this is the during the cooling phase so in this case during this solidification this is the bonding easily happens between the uh, two components so this is the way now the when you are talking about the electrode so electrode can be utilized in the consumable electrode or some cases electrode can be non consumable electrode both are both options are available and the current in this cases we can see the both either AC current or DC current anything can be used depending upon the type of material or type of the welding process we can use. So this is called usually understood that this is the fusion welding process. Now if we look into the uh, other process that means the transition welding process. So in this case what happens that when the two parent materials are there and we apply the this another liquid metal from some electrode or some wire just melting the wire and then this melting wire can be put into the gap of the two substrate material but this this is the molten this is the molten wire but the substrate it does not help to melt the substrate material so it just uh, this type of welding process is known as the the in we observe the case of the bridging and soldering uh, process so basically bridging and soldering process since the it does not melt the parent material only the consumable materials melt here and that consumable material uh, uh, the molten material is supplied between the two uh, components and then and then after certain period when the solidification occurs this it will try to join these two components but uh, in this case this since it is not melting the parent material so therefore it is known as the transition welding process also so bridging and soldering welding process is bridging and soldering process is under this category of the transition welding process. Now there is a another th third type of the welding process here you can see 
that solid state rolling process so one example is the solid state rolling process we can see this is the the two materials are there and the, at the interface we want to join the two material so at the interface there is some rotational tool so here heat will be generated the, by the friction between the uh, tool and the workpiece uh, because high rotational speeds makes the frictional heat generation and at the same time we will try to when try to move one particular direction this tool it will create the that uh, kind, kind of steering action of the material so it is the plasticization occurs and mixing of the two materials are occurs which is plasticide in the due to the frictional effect but in this case this is a specific morphology it will create when you try to join this thing but solid state it is called the solid state rolling process in the sense that it is uh, the maximum temperature in this case is below the melting point temperature so basically not no melting is associated with this process and temperature can go up to 70 to 80 percent of the melting point temperature so all heat are generated because of the frictional heat and mechanical bonding occurs between these two components in this case that's why it is called the solid state welding process so we see that there are there are three different categories of the welding process we usually available now we'll go into uh, details that if you look at the classification of the welding process each and every category they are having different names different techniques of the welding process so for example fusion welding so fusion can be done using the chemical source the gas gas welding we can use the gas welding so by burning the gas is responsible for the generation of the heat to the substrate as well as the smell the substrate so that's what it is called the gas welding process and then arc welding process means we can create the electric arc by passing through the electricity we can create the arc and that arc is responsible for melting the material then we can use the high energy beam welding process which is high energy beam we can use the laser or electron beam directly just to melt the substrate material so that's why it is called the it is also under the category of the fusion welding process then thermite welding process it's a chemical exothermic or you know the exothermic endothermic reaction we choose the reaction such that the chemical reaction is responsible for the generation of the heat at the at the joint so when that heat is that heat is basically helps to melt the substrate metal and the join these two components so that's why it is called the thermite welding then resistance spot welding process in this case also there is a application of the high current and uh, along with the uh, uh, this current and at uh, the contact resistance is responsible for the generation of the heat and that is joint coalescence of the joints occurs between the two components with the application of the pressure so here the resistance bottling process the heat generation is restricted in such way that it, it, will, it will be melting the temperature can be above the melting point temperature so these are the fusion rolling process uh, with the very common rolling process uh, under the fusion rolling process just i have discussed then transition rolling process so bedging and soldering process comes under the transition rolling process that we have already discussed and there is a solid state rolling process solid state rolling process there are different types of the solid state rolling process one is the only friction rolling so the friction it can be linear friction it can be rotational friction so that friction is responsible between the two components for the generation of the heat so when it is generated the heat but that heat is uh, restricted such that the temperature should not exceed the melting point temperature so here frictional heat there may be the ultrasonic uh, welding so we can see the the high frequency vibratory energy is utilized just to join the two components uh, in this in this very localized area the two components can be joined uh, but bulk temperature of the material is below the melting point temperature we can use some kind of the explosive and when you use the explosive it creates very specific morphology because our explosive can create the temperature can be go close to the sonic velocity and that sonic velocity will try to create some kind of the high impact on the substrate material and it creates very specific morphology and that morphology is um, bonding uh, joining the two components but it is in under the solid state welding process there is below the melting point temperature then we can use the diffusion welding also diffusion welding we can with the application of the pressure and temperature uh, but without any relative motion between these two components the diffusion uh, welding can also happen so diffusion is basically diffusion time is usually much more so we need sufficient time diffusion to occur between the two surfaces and the favorable condition for the diffusion to occur such that the surface preparation is one of the important because the to accelerate the diffusion between the two components we need to remove the oxide layers from the surface so here surface preparation is very important in case of the diffusion welding process but we use the temperature here but without any relative motion between the two components it means to say that there is no frictional heat generation in in this case 
then electromagnetic pulse welding so we can simply use the principle of the electromagnetic so high impact force is generated uh, because of the eddy current generation and the electromotive force uh, to sit or to uh, components uh, which are ductile in nature that components can be joined together using the the with the application of the principle of the electromagnetic pulse welding so this are the typical uh, classification or broad categorization of the different types of the welding process now if we look into uh, this physics of the fusion welding process we, we see that uh, principle of the fusion welding process we can see here the following this figure so here created by the coil the in this case is the coalescence of the bonding uh, occurs between the two components just by creation of the melting to melt the substrate material so when it is melting both the material then it mix with respect to the together then yeah, after solidification it creates the bonding between these two components so here it is called the fusion welding process then fusion is created here now once uh, in this case we need to apply some kind of the heat source maybe arc maybe laser maybe electron beam so it's the moves the heat source one particular direction and the one part is create the molten pool the heated it creates the melt pool the liquid metal pool it will be created and once moves the heat source in the uh, forward direction then uh, subsequently the solidify the other component and this is the heat affected zone you see the remaining part of the heat affected which is not undergone in the melting so therefore this heat affected zone is the basically some phase transformation occurs but without below the melting point temperature so we create the solidified zone and the heat affected zone is usually associated with the any kind of the fusion welding process and of course the molten zone molten pool associated with the fusion welding process so uh, in this case we see when solidification means when the transition from the liquid phase to solid phase usually occurs and heat affected zone also created but this cooling phase is or during the solidification uh, there is a change there is lots of change in the microstructural aspect the metallurgical aspect it basically associated with the distortion and residual stress generation in the structure now if we compare the principle of the solid state rolling process it's a very basically the temperature below the melting point temperature but in this case created either by the macroscopic or the microscopic coalescences of the materials in the solid state usually occurs uh, in case of the uh, solid state oiling process now we can uh, if we focus on the solid state oiling process so but why we have the option for the fusion oiling process now why you go for the solid state oiling process because there is a certain advantage in the solid state oiling process as compared to the fusion oiling process one is that the joining of the dissimilar metals and alloy is sometimes problematic if you follow the fusion welding process because in that cases there is a formation of the intermetallic and there might be possibility to the formation of the lots of the solidification cracking so to avoid all these things it is better option to go for the solid state welding process because it is not subjected to the uh, any kind of the melting uh, of the material so this is the one point second point is that joining of difficult to oil materials which is difficult to oil materials by following any kind of the fusion welding process for example the aluminium and the super alloy so aluminium problem is the for fusion oiling the aluminium is the high affinity to the form, formation of the oxides and formation of the any kind of the defective oiling using uh, in case of the aluminium and at the same time aluminium thermal conductivity also al al aluminium is also very high so all this process some kind of the problem associated with the fusion oiling process so in that cases although aluminium is a very soft material as compared to the steel so therefore but aluminium is more preferred to process or join using the solid state oiling process so in this case this is one uh, point there is another point is the super alloy because super alloy fusion oiling of the super alloy most of the cases is the the microstructure is so complex it will create so that it will always start to create some kind of the micro crack crack formation is very common associated with the formation of the fusion oiling of the super alloy so in that case we will try to the fusion oil super alloy of the solid state oiling is more advantageous in, in that sense and third point is the strong and almost intermetallic free oil can be produced in case of the solid state oiling process because it is not subjected to the uh, melting so some in some cases the most of the intermetallics usually from the above the melting point temperature so therefore uh, above the melting point temperature means when their reaction will happen during the solidification phase and this temperature the high temperature normally intermetallics usually form so therefore that can be avoided in case of the solid state oiling process of course 
but solid state rolling process is not exactly completely free from the intermetallic formation but it can be reduced the formation of the intermetallic in case of the solid state rolling process so that's why the in that cases this advantage is to follow that since it is produced the less amount of the intermetallic and intermetallic is actually very common in case of the dissimilar uh, joining or the two different materials joining so therefore uh, in that case solid state rolling process is more advantageous just to avoid the formation of the intermetallic uh, during the rolling process now there are four different types of the usually different types of the solid state rolling process we can see the what way we can apply the one is the pressure rolling by application of the pressure the joining can also be done we can second is the ultrasonic welding so it's a vibratory energy can be utilized for the joining of the two components so you can create the high frequency vibration at the interface of the two material and then the localized melting occurs but bulk temperature should be below the melting point temperature then diffusion welding also is the one kind of the solid state welding process and finally the friction welding or friction stair welding which is under the category of the solid state welding technique so these are the most common solid state welding process but there are so many other types of the welding processes that the technologies different technologies are also there but we'll try to discuss on the very basic types of the welding process in this particular module now if we look into what are the bonding mechanism of the uh, solid state welding process so how these there are different the two components can be joined because in this cases we are not melting the substrate material so if you look into the bonding mechanism of solid state welding process first is the one is the localized melting it might happen so that very localized position the melting made, uh, happens but if you look into the overall bulk material uh, that overall temperature is below the melting point temperature so but localized melting can happen and there's bonding between these two components can happen second is the diffusion so if you allow the diffusion between the two surfaces the two components okay and then this diffusion and, and is basically try to uh, bond between the two surfaces by by just movement of the the grain boundary uh, at the interface and then or man it try to create some kind of the single grain ja, just by avoiding or just eliminating the interface between the two uh, intimate contact surface but in this cases the we have to create the environment of the intimate contact between the two surfaces without uh, that is free from any kind of the oxides layer or contaminated layer so diffusion will be more successful if we we'll create the the surface is almost pure without any kind of the contamination then recrystallization may also happen the recrystallization is the is basically through recrystallization the bonding between the two surfaces or at the interface is possible then addition of the two surfaces uh, to uh, metallic components the addition can also be a mechanism for the bonding of the in case of solid state welding process some interfacial reaction may also happen uh, such that uh, some uh, say for example some intermediate uh, layer uh, may also happen in friction state welding process between the two interface in case of the dissimilar so that interfacial reaction or formation of the intermetallics is helpful just to bond between the two components and some cases the interfacial morphology that means specific morphology it will creating the at the between the two interface of the surfaces in this interfacial morphology is very specific in case of the explosive welding process so in that case we can find very special type of the interfacial morphology and that is helps to bonding the between the two components so these are the different bonding mechanism associated with the solid state welding process now we'll try to look into the physics of the arc welding process so physics of the arc welding process we know that uh, we, we already mentioned that power source it can be ac or dc even it is dc then we can connect the complete electrical circuit we need to produce such that electrical energy is basically converted to the thermal energy in case of the arc welding process but we see the connectivity can be like that the, the electrode one side is the electrode another side is the workpiece so it may happen so that workpiece can be negative and electrode can be positive or other way electrode can be negative and workpiece can be positive so depending upon the applications we can change the the different we can fix the different polarity associated with any arc um, arc welding process no in arc welding process basically if you observe the arc welding process usually the current is very high but voltage is actually low uh, in this case so basically voltage is try to maintain the specific arc length because when you're creating the arc so we are not exactly the maintain some certain gap very small gap between the electrode and the workpiece so within that gap the arc is basically created so this arc gap is 
mainly controlled by the what is the total voltage apply in the electrical circuit and the melting efficiency or maybe heat generation associated with the either electrode or either workpiece it depends on the what is the amount of the current we are applying during the welding process so it is having different role here so current is basically responsible for the amount of the heat generation but voltage is mainly responsible to maintain the particular arc length so if we if we uh, try to vary fixed certain arc length we see for certain arc length we need to apply certain voltage in the, in the circuit so these are the importance of the voltage and current ap applicable in specific to the welding process uh, you can see but there is a role of the polarity also that means whether which we should put the positive uh, terminal to the electrode or positive terminal to the workpiece it depends on the the application so there are two options one is the but dc current i am talking about the dc current but dc current which we can choose the polarity so one is the uh, dc minus dc minus that means direct current electrode negative dc en another option is the direct current electrode positive dc ep so here you can see that this depending upon the polarity DC EN or DC EP, the amount of the heat generation are varying between the electrode and the workpiece. We will discuss how what way the heat generation is uh, varying. Now, heat gen we can see that in if you show the GTAW and GMAW, you know, GTAW means gas tungsten arc welding and GMAW means gas metal arc welding process. So, in these two cases, the difference of the welding process is size li like that. In GTRW process, we use the non-consumable ele electrode and in case of the gas metal arc welding process, we use the consumable electrode. That means gas metal arc welding process, the electrode is consumed. So, electrode is melting and the molten metal is deposited on the substrate and that is deposition will help to bonding the two component. So, this is for the GMRW, but GTRW we do not use any kind of the consumable electrode. Here, electrode is uh, does not uh, uh, consume here but it is electrode is just to use the creation of the arc and the heat the workpiece material. So, these are the two different cases but we see the polarity uh, understanding of the polarity uh, and the heat generation because of the certain polarity will help what kind of the polarity we can choose or DC current whether it is positive uh, DC EP or DC EN the in particular to in case of the GTRW or GMW process. Now, here overall you can see that electrical circuit we see the electricity flow from the power source definitely electron can flow electricity flow one particular direction and through the electrode and across the arc. So, if you see through the electrode the electricity flow through the electrode and uh, uh, through the arc also when creating the arc it is the this is passage of the electrons. Now, through the base material and the back to the power source. So, it is a basically create the complete it is a create complete circuit actually and one is connected to the positive another is connected to the negative. So, this is the basic concept associated with the arc welding process. Now, if we try to discuss generation of the heat and, uh, and the perspective of the generation of the heat one particular polarity we can see that mass of the electron is actually less and it gets accelerated at the high velocity and more heat is generated at anode. Anode means is basically uh, which is positive. So, flow of the electron we know the electron mass is less and the electron will try to flow will be uh, attracted or maybe accelerated of the electron is possibly towards the positive side. So, if you say that electrode is negative the direct current the electrode is uh, the negative terminal and the workpiece is connected to the positive terminal then what happens in this case then electron the flow of the current is basically flow of the electron will be more attracted by the towards the positive uh, workpiece. So, high velocity electron will be basically uh, following is the falls on the workpiece surface. So, therefore, it will release this kinetic energy much more. So, in this particular situation when electrode is connected to the negative terminal and workpiece is connected to the positive terminal. So, maximum amount of the heat generation will be on the workpiece uh, on the workpiece side. So, usually typically two third of the total heat generated uh, is on the work workpiece side and maybe remaining one third of the heat will be generated to the uh, electrode side. So, if his electrode is connected to the the negative. So, it means the direct current electrode negative DC EN it is called the DC EN polarity. So, DC in polarity maximum heat will be generated on the workpiece 
and uh, minimum heat generation will be on the electrode side and this is the unit C. So, therefore, if this is dn, so workpiece we try to melt much more on the workpiece and we do not suppose we do not want to uh, consume the electrode. So, therefore, because less amount of the heat generation will be in the electrode side. So, it will uh, basically in, in that cases in which cases we do not want to consume the electrode then we will try to follow this kind of the polarity DCN polarity. So, that is why in case of the GTAW process we commonly use the DCN polarity because GTAW process we usually use the non-consumable electrode. So, we will try to un, um, follow that less amount of the heat will be generated to the to the electrode and maximum amount of the heat will be generated to the workpiece. So, it will help to melt the workpiece also. So, that is why GTAW we can use the DCN polarity, but in case of the GMRW process we can use the DCEP polarity, DCEP polarity in just reverse. So, DCEP polarity means the electrode will be connected to the positive terminal and the workpiece will be connected to the negative terminal. So, when workpiece will be connected to the negative terminal. So, he in the on the workpiece the one third heat will be generated and but the electrode two third heat will be generated. So, if you want to consume the electrode, so most more amount heat will be on generated on the electrode side. So, in that sense we can use the gas metal arc welding process we can use the DCEP polarity. So, basically we say that DCEP polarity is used consumable electrode welding process and uh, basically and the and the in case of the uh, very thin sheets if we try to join those two uh, components. So, these are the understanding of the heat generation for the different polarity DC polarity, but with certain cases we can utilize the AC current also, but AC current the polarity actually changes in every half cycle. So, therefore, AC current is more applicable that this a, it is a continuously changing the uh, in the in the every, every half cycle the continuously changing the current in this cases. So, therefore, we in which cases the cleaning action is required because the material like aluminum. So, basically aluminum will try to prone more amount of the oxide. So, aluminum oxide on the surface the affinity of the oxide formation or affinity to the oxide oxygen or formation of the oxide is much more in case of the aluminum. So, therefore, before oiling of the aluminum we need to remove the oxide layer. So, that is called the cleaning action is required in case of the aluminum. So, in that case we usually use the AC current in case of the uh, aluminum or aluminum alloy is usually pro prefer because in this cases the polarity is changes is every every half cycle changing so that will help it is something like that 50 percent heat will be generated to the workpiece and 50 percent heat will be generated to the substrate material so it will help this 50 percent heat is basically helps to first the remove the oxide layers and then you try to weld uh, this together on this component. So, that is why AC current is more preferable for the welding of the aluminum or aluminum alloy. Now, if you look into different energy sources for the welding process, we see that what uh, energy is basically is produced, we need see that there is a different source of the energy is required in the welding process just to bond the two, two components though and that will helps to somehow this energy is required to generate the heat uh, when you try to make the covalences between the uh, two components and uh, that is that is the you know that is the principle of the welding process. Now, if you see the categorization of different types of the energy sources which is usually used in case of the welding process one is the electrical sources. Electrical sources means we use the electrical energy available from the AC or DC current or DC source or DC power source we can use it for the welding process. So, example is the arc welding process, resistant welding process, electro slag welding process all these kind of the welding process we can use the, the energy for the welding is the electrical energy electrical source. In some cases we can utilize the chemical sources for example, chemical energy store uh, in the different form and that can be converted to the useful heat because the chemical energy in this case is the chemical energy is sto stored chemical energy is converted to the heat which is one example is the oxyfuel gas oiling process. So, oxyfuel acts with the mixture of the oxygen and acetylene that actually the burning of this gas with the proper mixing ratio between the oxygen and acetylene will helps to heat the substrate and join together. So, that is the chemical energy is basically utilized here the is converted to the heat energy. Similarly, on the thermite welding also we can use this uh, chemical source of the energy that is converted to the heat energy. Similarly, there are other form of the energy for example, optical sources. Optical sources the in this cases focused beam is usually used that is the electron or laser beam we can use uh, according to the law of optics. So, it is the laser beam or electron beam which focused as per the law of the optics on a particular area. So, that is why and it is called the 
optical sources and it's basically very high power density is possible to achieve uh, in this particular case. So, that is so why we say this is the one category of the energy that is called the optical source of the energy. So, example of the optical source of energy is the laser beam welding process and electron beam welding process. Then there is a mechanical sources also. So, mechanical sources it is actually involve some type of the relative motion between the mechanical movement between the two component which actually produces some kind of the heat energy. For example, friction welding. So, if you do the ro rotation or linear friction between the two components, so this frictional energy will basically generate the heat and we can utilize the heat for the welding or bonding of the two components. Similarly, ultrasonic energy also here also very localized position high vibration between the two components is basically vibratory energy is converted to the frictional energy frictional slip between the two components. So, in that cases we can use the ultrasonic welding process and explosive explosion welding also we can use the mechanical sources because we create the high impact. Uh, high impact velocity for the, the sheet metal just to bond between these two components. So, a high impact sheet coalition between the two components when happens to sheets, metallic sheets happen, then they create particular morphology and then bonding between these two sheets. So, in that cases, we say all this kind of the welding processes the we use the mechanical source of the energy. Then, solid state source. Solid state source means in this case, this absence of the any kind of the relative motion so or any kind of the mechanical sources. So, basically, here we can solid state so we can say characterized by a lack of motion in in contrast to the mechanical source so it's like diffusion welding process because diffusion welding process we don't move there is no relative motion between the two components we just fix two components and with the, we apply the the uh, this uh, pressure and temperature just to bond the between these two components so this we consider this type of welding we consider under the solid state source now if you look into this uh, arc welding power source, we are talking about this power source DC, AC, AC current or DC power we can utilize for the arc welding process. But there is a other perspective, we can say the arc welding power source can be two different way. If you remember the arc welding power source is basically in welding arc welding process, we use the voltage and current both are required. But how to control uh, this current and voltage, what is the impact of this? Uh, controlling of the current and voltage for the different types of the welding process. Based on that, we can see there are two different types of the power source into different categories can be classified. One is the constant current or falling characteristic power source or other is the constant voltage or flat characteristics power source. So, these are the two different types of the power source. It means that what way we apply the power uh, to the welding unit. So, it is either we can supply the power at keeping current as a constant current or you can supply the power keeping voltage as a constant we can vary the current here in this case or first case is constant current we can vary the voltage depending upon the applications area. So, these are the two different ways we can categorize is the falling characteristic power source or flat characteristic power source. So, first is the constant voltage power source. Constant voltage power source we can see that in this cases so maintain the preset voltage or the relative arc length in case of the um, constant voltage power source. So, basically constant voltage mean if you remember the constant voltage you are talking about this uh, voltage is more related to the to the uh, the arc length. So, in this case we try to maintain the uh, if there is a constant application of the power as a constant voltage means the uh, we maintain more or less the constant arc length. So, there is no variation of the arc length uh, it remains more or less constant. So, then in that cases to maintain the arc length as a constant we need to apply the remaining the voltage remains the constant. So, in that case this type of the power source we can utilize in case of the semi automatic arc welding process because semi automatic arc welding process possibilities are there that we try to maintain the arc length as a constant. So, in that case we use the constant voltage power source. So, we see that the in the flat this characteristic something like that is a the sharp this dropping uh, characteristic gradually the it is a linear this uh, relation between the voltage and current uh, in, in this case. So, it is a basically downward or negative slope we can use the uh, this thing because this this voltage indicates the uh, open circuit voltage open circuit voltage the potential difference available in the welding system this is the open circuit voltage but when you start of the welding process that gradually voltage 
if the there is a uh, this uh, I think voltage is decreasing uh, current is basically increasing voltage is decreasing but the rate of uh, what way the current is increasing and voltage is decreasing this is follow some kind of the linear and the dropping characteristic if you remember we use the we say the what constant voltage of the flat characteristic power source. So, the it is the flat characteristic power source, this is the changing of the voltage with the increasing of the current is the, the flat way that uh, this uh, uh, linearly it is basically changing uh, this thing in a, in a welding system. Now, we see this part particular uh, type of the uh, power source is basically when is the automatic welding process, we try to set up the automatic welding process, semi-automatic welding process, we use the power characteristics following the constant voltage. But if you look into the other constant current power source, you can see the sharply dropping characteristics. So, how voltage and current is basically changing, the voltage is basically decreasing, here also voltage decreasing with reference to the open circuit voltage, but decrement is not linearly. Here is the sharply dropping, very quickly dropping characteristic so with increasing the current here we think the very quickly the voltage drops here so this type of the power switch is basically used for the manual arc welding process so because in manual arc welding process when you try to do do perform the welding process by hand by your hand so in that case we can see that it is very difficult to maintain that the gap between the electrode and the workpiece as a constant so in that case there might be some variation of this the arc length can vary so, when we are allowing the arc length to vary, so then in that cases it is necessary to try to adopt the variation of the, the voltage, but in this in this particular system we can keep the melting rate as a constant, the current remains constant, but voltage we are allow more allowed to vary uh, because there is a variation of the arc length. So, that is why in this case the we maintain the constant current, but as for the variation of the uh, this uh, manual arc welding process when there is a variation of the arc length then voltage variation may happen in this case. So, that is why it is called the constant current uh, or sharply dropping characteristics uh, power source. But remember this constant current power source is actually applicable in case of the desirable for the manual arc welding process. So, in a welding machines, welding power source you can choose whether it is automatic welding, semi-automatic welding. So, or whether it is a manual arc welding based on that we can choose whether it is constant voltage power source or we can use the constant current uh, power source. So, if you look into all this uh, what we have discussed so far associated to the link process, we make a summary on that. So, we observe that this thing heat generation in the electrode basically it depends on the polarity, DC polarity, direct current polarity whether it is electrode positive or electrode negative. We can estimate that uh, in case of the electrode positive then more amount of the heat generation will be the electrode and less amount of the heat will be the workpiece. But in case of the welding of the aluminum alloy, we usually we do not use the DC current, rather we can use the AC current uh, in, in the in, in case of the aluminum because AC current helps for the cleaning action of the that means just removal of the oxide layers of, of the surface which is material having the high affinity to form the uh, oxidation. Now, if you see the constant voltage, so constant voltage is more related to the arc length. So, maybe constant voltage means you can assume the arc length remains more or less constant. So, which is basically definitely it will be most suitable constant voltage current source is basically most suitable for the semi-automatic arc welding process. But constant current power source means we can align to much variation of the constant voltage. So, therefore, there is variation of the change in the arc length. So, in that cases it is more suitable, it is more uh, uh, link with the manual arc welding process. Now, if you observe that bridging and the soldering process, we there is no melting of the parent metal which is different from the fusion welding process because fusion welding process melting in the both parent metals also there as well as the if you use any consumable electrode that is will also be melting in case of the fusion welding process. So, here there is a difference between the bridging and soldering with respect to the fusion welding process. So, I think uh, that is all. Thank you very much for your kind attention.